that goes on inside. The doubts, the fears, the, the anger, Lord. I pray that every bit of that can be given over to you. Father, we thank you that you're a great savior. I pray that you would bless the rest of the season for the University of, of Washington. That you would help the guys on their team, Lord, to, to maximize their God-given talents and be reminded of you every time they do it. And I pray for our team as well, Lord. And we would give you honor and glory even tonight as we go out among the, among the people, Lord. That we would honor you with our bodies and our minds and our thoughts and our actions. That we would do nothing that would bring you uh, a misrepresentation of who you are, Lord. I just want to give you the praise and glory again for this game. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Even though war will rise against me in this, I will be confident. And our lesson this week is confidence. You know, uh, we played the University of Washington and for the third time in like 16 months. We won the first game in Seattle during the regular season a year ago. We lost a, a tough one in the uh, Holiday Bowl last year. And then this game here was a big game for us. And you know, we were wondering how confident would our football team be? But really confidence, it, it, it really comes from God. And, and, and you know, anytime you see a person being confident, it's just merely a parable of what our confidence should really be in, in Christ. When Jesus Christ enters our life, the Bible tells us we have nothing to be afraid of anymore. We have nothing to worry about. That he promises to maximize our ability. That he promises to, to see us through, that he would never leave us. And yet, there's such, so much of a lack of confidence in the world. I've always told my players, that preparation and confidence are married and time performs the wedding ceremony. And what do I mean by that? It means that a person who is well prepared on the football field, for example, is going to be a confident athlete. And, and time performing the wedding ceremony means this. It means that you have to maximize your time. When God passed out time, he has no discrimination. Everybody gets 24-7 and 365. Everybody has the same amount of time to deal with. The question is, what do you do with your time? If you're preparing well, your confidence level is going to be high. A very confident athlete is one who's prepared well. So how does that translate into eternal life? Because that's really what counts. How could you be confident in life if you don't know that you know Christ is your Savior and Lord. You don't know that your sins have been forgiven. You think on your own merit that you could, you know, maybe somehow find the grace of God. It doesn't work that way. And that's why there's so much doubt in the world. That's why so many people are afraid to die and even afraid to live. If you're afraid to die, I can tell you you're afraid to live. There's no question about it. But one who is confident is one who's prepared. How do you prepare? Jesus told Nicodemus in the book of John, we read about it. He, said, he told Nicodemus, Nicodemus, unless you're born again, <laughs> you're going to miss out. What does it mean to be born again? It means that you must die to yourself, die to your own dreams, die to your own self-righteousness. No one is righteous enough for God. That's the gospel message, is that someone had to come and take our place. And it was Jesus Christ who died on a cross in place of us to forgive us for our sins. He rose from the dead, promising us a new inheritance, brand new life, eternal life, an abundant life here on earth, starting now. If you know Christ is your Savior and Lord. If you don't know Christ is Savior and Lord, you have no reason to be confident. How could you ever go out to practice tomorrow? How could you ever go back to school, hang out with your friends, watch TV, whatever it is that you do that you think is fun, and really have fun, knowing that there's a cloud of doubt, there's something wrong, there's something missing in your life. If you really want true confidence, unbreakable confidence, it only comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. End of story, period, that's it. There's nothing else. There's no other religion. All the other religions of the world are wrong. It's Christ and Christ alone that gives confidence. The confidence to live this life abundantly, to take risk, to, to, to put your arms around other people, to really love deeply, to be intimate with a living creator, to withstand persecution. There's over 170,000 
people per year that die around the planet because of their faith in, in Christ. And they're told they better back off or they'll die. And they choose to go to their death. That's confidence, man. <laughs> that is like saying, you know what? I got Jesus. Who you got? Because they know there's a life after this one. And it's called eternal life. Do you know the risen Savior? Do you know Jesus Christ? Don't talk about how confident you are when you don't know Christ because it's a false confidence. Because when you die, it will all end. And you will spend an eternity in a place called hell. No, if you really want to be confident, you got to be prepared. Confidence and preparation are married. Are you prepared to die? If you know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, you are prepared to die. One out of one of us will die, which means you're prepared to really live now. But time performs the wedding ceremony. You have time right now to decide. But eventually your time's going to run out, just like the game ran out here. The time ran out on Washington in this game. Victory for the Huskers. The time will run out for you. At some point your life's going to expire. You've got to use the time now to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. To receive eternal life. And then to glorify Him with the rest of the time that you have on this earth. Now that, my friends, is confidence. I hope you're confident. I hope you know Jesus is your Savior and Lord. I hope you don't spend one more day deciding to leave Him out. God bless you and have a great week.